With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? Ah, uh, this is a story that goes to show you never can tell when a trick or two you've learned may come in handy and even save a few lives, including your own. Well, anyway, we call this cleanup of Caribou Mesa. California and I were riding toward the frontier settlement of Joshua Flat up in the high range country when I noticed something up the trail away. Hey, California, look there. Up the crest of the ridge. Ah, uh, be darned. Must be a dozen of them. They're riding this way as if the old Nick itself was chasing them. Let's pull off the trail and get out of sight behind those boulders. The way they're pounding that bunch of cayuses down the trail, they're certainly not going to stop and pass the time of day. Well... They won't be able to see us here. Say, that sure was a fast-riding bunch of hombres. Yeah. Now, where do you suppose they was going in such a rush, Hoppy? I don't know, California, and it's no worry of ours. So let's be on our way. We're only about a mile from Joshua Flat. Yeah. Ah. Uh, well, I'll be diggity, diggity turned. Look ahead, Hoppy. Here comes another bunch of them. Well. Now, this is getting interesting. We'll have to see what it's all about. Yeah, you want to pull behind them rocks again? No, we'll stay right here on the trail and find out what's going on. Hey, let's go! Come on, people coming out! Look at those cannons! What are you men up to? Hey! Save your breath, you shipless pole cat. You'll need it. And get your hands up, both of you. Ah, uh, look, stranger, what are you making a mistake? Oh, we're making a mistake, are we? Well, let me tell you two sidewinders something. It's you who made the mistake, dumping out of that bunch of thieving bandits and trying to backtrack and maybe ambush us. <laughs> ambush you? Well, it's plain you don't know who we are. Yeah, we know who you are. To a trick of Tompkins thieving rustlers. Yeah, and that's all this year posse needs to know to string up the both of you. All right, men. Get the ropes around the neck. All right, yeah, come on now, let us. You've got a fight on your hands. You can't do this to me and hop along, Cassidy. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Cleanup of Caribou Mesa. Hoppy and California have run into a posse which has mistaken them for members of a gang the posse was pursuing. Hoppy and California have been seized, and the posse is ready to hang them. Hold it! Hold it, man! Just a second here, yeah, just a second. Stranger! I heard you call out a name there. Did you say Hopalong Cassidy? That's my name. This is my partner, California Carlson. Well, knock me down. Huh. We sure was making a mistake. Well, uh, we accept your apology. Now you better get these men of yours to stand back, because I ain't entirely cooled off yet. All right, men, all right. Quiet, quiet. Well, uh... I hope there's no hard feelings, Cassidy. No, not at all. But I'm interested in knowing what's going on. Suppose you do some explaining. Uh, sure, Cassidy, sure. What say we all uh, get down and have a powwow here? Yeah, right. yeah. I'm interested myself in hearing how come I nearly got my neck stretched. <clears throat> well, uh, Cassidy, first of all, I'm Glenn Goff. I'm the deputy sheriff over at Joshua Flat. These here men are all settlers hereabouts. And you were riding as a posse, chasing that bunch who passed us a while back. Yeah, there was uh, some of uh, uh, Trigger Tompkins' gang. Who is this Trigger Tompkins? Oh, just a bad hombre. Moved up here with his gang about a month ago. Come from somewhere uh, south of here, we figure. Mm-hmm. Just what have they been up to, Goff? 
shooting up the town, robbing anything that ain't guarded, rustling horses and cattle all over the range, and that, that ain't all. Now, what they... kind of peace officers you got around here that let such things go on? Well, uh, you see, I'm, I'm the only deputy, and we're we all peaceable folk hereabouts. Uh, besides, uh, Tompkins' gang is a shifty lot of varmints. All varmints I ever heard of is shifty. That ain't no reason not to stomp them out. How about that, Goff? What's been done about this? Well, uh, 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 here's how it is. You see, uh, uh, there's been no way of knowing just where and when Tompkins' gang ever was going to strike. That's so, Cassidy. Uh, they come storming down off the mesa like a bunch of Comanches, just when we least figure on it. Sure. If we guard the town, then they hit the rangers. And if we watch the range... They raid the town. What about this posse here? You must have been expecting them today. Well, I was coming to that, Casty. It weren't that we was expecting a raid. We we got this bunch together on account of on account of what happened to Annie Culver. Annie Culver? What is all this? Old Bill Culver's daughter. The gang come on Annie riding alone the other day, and they. He took her off to the place they got up on Caribou Mesa. Kidnapping, uh, eh? That's mighty serious. Are they demanding a ransom? No, they ain't. And this shows you just how sharp that trigger Tompkins is. He figures as long as he's got the gal up there, we don't dare make a move to get him. Yeah, if he... we let him get away with this, it's like giving him the settlement and everything in it. Yeah, you see how it is, Casty? Tompkins not only got the gal, he's got a lot of men up there on Caribou Mesa. Yeah, and they're a mean lot. And Trigger Tompkins himself is worse than all of them put together. But what can we do? Well, we got to go up there and wipe out the whole lot of them. No, not while they got Annie. No, so oh, I'm not taking a chance of Annie. All right, all right, uh, take it easy. You men, uh, who can tell me something about this place the gang has? Well, uh, young Bob Jeffrey here can tell you, Cassidy. Go ahead, Bob, tell him. Well, Mr. Cassidy, it's like this. Annie Culver's my girl. And when I heard they took her off, I... Well, I went up on the mesa to scout around and see if maybe I could save Annie. That took a lot of courage, Bob. Oh, shucks, Mr. Cassidy. Didn't do any good. They caught me right off. It was just by luck I managed to escape in the middle of the night and get back to town. Did you see much of the place, Bob, uh, what it was like? Well, I got a good look, all right. There's a main cabin where they got Annie and a separate bunkhouse just in the middle of the mesa. I see. And how well protected is the place? Well... The mesa's pretty hard to get to, and they got guards all around the rim. They have, huh? Well, they're not taking any chances of being surprised by anyone approaching the place. Well, it's not only the guards. There's lots more men keeping herd on all the steers and horses they got up there. Hmm. So it's not only a question of getting up on the mesa without being spotted, but of getting past the men watching over all the cattle they've rustled. That's right. I tried to slip in through a narrow pass where there's only one guard, but well, he caught me right off. But suppose you had got past him, Bob. You have made your way to the cabin where you say they're keeping Annie? Well, not a chance, Mr. Cassidy. Trigger's men are thicker than thorns on a cactus bush. You see, Cassidy? Maybe the only thing to do is to collect a real big posse right up there and shoot it out. I don't think so, Goff. Not as long as they got the girl. Her life would certainly be in danger. A mass attack won't work. Well, uh, maybe you got a better idea, huh? I think I have. Tonight, California and I go up to Caribou Mesa alone. Well, what are you saying, Cassidy? Why, oh, man, that'd be suicide. No, it won't. Now, listen, Goff. Here's what we'll do. California and I'll slip in among the herd up there and stampede them. We'll ride in among the stampeding horses and cattle. Oh, I'm beginning to see what you mean. Tompkins' men will be plenty busy, and then you'll be able to get to the cabin where they're holding the Culver Gale. That's it. Once we get back with her, your men can take over Caribou Mason while the gang is still scattered. Pick them off as they come back from rounding up the herd. Well, it might work. Yeah. Only, uh, it's going to be mighty dangerous for you, Cassidy. I guess you don't know, Hoplong Cassidy, mister. Adventures, he's bread. Excitement, he's butter. And danger, why, to him that's like strawberry jam to top it all. California, there's a small pass to the mesa where Bob said there was only one guard. Yeah, I only hope he don't start any fast shooting before we flush him out. Uh, once we get the cattle excited, he'll come out on the run. I'll go up the slope on foot. There's plenty of cover for me. Here, you leave my horse when you go in. I'll be ready for my signal. Count on me. When I hear the hoot owl cry you give, I'll be on my way through the pass. That's it. Well, I'm off. Hmm. 
I hope this concerned idea works. At shh, hold still, yon recurse. That's it. Get up. I'm a rip snorting, fire eating terror, and I, uh, I, I stole me a horse that'll make all the boys jealous. <laughs> Yippee! Just wait till they see this horse I got. Who's that? And I, uh, who's who? Me? Come on, you. Speak up. I got you covered. No, how'd you like that? You don't recognize who I am. I am the best little old horse wrestler Dickie Tompkins got. That's who. Uh, well, you sure took a load on uh, drinking whiskey, whoever you are. Well, come on along here so I can get a good look at you. Sure, sure, you here you want to take a look at me. Well, go on and look. Say, I never saw you before. Oh. Ah, nice performance, California. Uh, you sure slipped up behind him quiet, Hoppy. And the neat way you clipped him there, he'll be sleeping sound till sun up. Well, let's get up on the mesa. And remember, ride with your body flattened out low on your horse's back. I'll do it, Hoppy. But I just hope this here stampeding trick is going to work, or we'll be a couple of uh, dead hombres. <laughs> Nothing will stop these critters now. Right. Let's clear off to the edge of the herd. The cabin should be over there. Hoppy. Hoppy, there's a light. Must be the cabin window. Yeah, that's it, all right. There's a corral. We can turn our horses in there with the others where they won't be noticed. Good idea. Then we'll know just where to find them if we need them in a hurry. Yeah, here we are. All right, turn them in. Right. Get in there. Get in. Now, let's see how the land lies. You see anyone? Nope. Everything looks clear between here and the cabin. All right. Let's get over to that window, keep in the shadows. I'll follow right behind you, Hoppy. Keep down now. I'm going to look in the window. Here's hoping they ain't been watching us out of that window all this time. Quiet now. The girl's in there. As far as I can see, there's only one man guarding her. What are we waiting for, then? Let's bust on in. All right, get your gun out. I'm going to try the door. Maybe it's unlocked. You ready? I'm all set, Hoppy. Here goes. Get your hands up, you, and drop that rifle you're holding. Miss Culver, are you all right? No. No, go away. It's a trap. What? It's a... Get up, you two. We got you covered all around. And drop your guns. That's right. Well, it seems like we were expected. That's right, Cassidy. We've been expecting you. We knew all about that stampede and trick of yours. As you see, it didn't work. It sure stampeded off every critter you didn't have corral, though. Sure, that much of it worked because we didn't know just how you figured out getting past the guard. But my men will have every one of them back by sunup. Lots of things can happen between now and sunup. Yeah, lots of things can happen to you. And I've still got five hands besides myself to handle you two. You had things all figured out, didn't you? That's right. And the important thing is we've still got the girl. And now we've got hop along Cassidy himself and his partner. Tompkins has spies in Joshua Flat, Mr. Cassidy. He's known all along you were going to try to come here. So that's it. A spy right in the posse. And this, I take it, is Trigger Tompkins. That's right. Well, what are you staring at so hard, Cassidy? You, Tompkins. I'm getting that face of yours clear in my mind. I like to remember the bad hombres I intend to put out of circulation. Huh? Well, Cassidy, we'll see about that. Blackie, right, take him out to the bunkhouse. Uh, Tie him up and lock him up in the back room. Right. We'll see you two later and make sure you're out of circulation. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Cleanup of Caribou Mesa. Hoppy and California have stampeded Trigger Tompkins' herds on Caribou Mesa, and his gang of guards are scattered around up the animals. But in going into the cabin to rescue Annie Culver, Hoppy and California stepped into a trap. Now, disarmed and tied up, they are locked in the bunkhouse. I don't see how we're going to get out of this mess, Hoppy. They get us hogtied, hand and foot. That's a mess, all right. But it's not over yet, California. Not over? 
Tompkins and his gang already so far in bad with the law, they ain't going to worry none about a couple of more crimes, like murdering us. Yeah, I know. I've been thinking about how we're going to get out of here before Tompkins has a chance to get around to us. But we're tied up, Poppy. The room's locked. And, uh, and there's that guard just outside the door. What can we do? If we can trick the guard to come rushing in here, we'll make him untie us. Make him untie us? Oh, you ain't making sense, Hoppy. Uh, you... Or are you? I think I am. Listen, can you roll yourself over here to me? Come on, try it. Sure, sure, I'll try. That's it. Come on. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm getting there. A uh, little more. Uh, here I am. Ah, that's fine. Now listen. They took our guns, but they still have our cartridge belts. So what good does that do? Huh? Never mind. Get some cartridges out of my belt. How? My hands are tied. Well, do it with your teeth. You got them in, haven't you? Yeah, I got... Oh, oh no, Hoppy. I Get as many as you can into your mouth. Now, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Anything you say, Hoppy. I... Work fast. One. Come on, come on. Two. Three. Hurry it up. Four. Five. That's enough. That's good. Mm-hmm. Now roll over to that iron stove in the corner and spit mm-hmm. those cartridges into the fire and duck. Mm-hmm. When the bullets start exploding, that guard will come rushing into the room. From then on, leave it to me. Now go on. Mm-hmm. Hurry it up. Mm-hmm. That's it. <coughs> bullets in the fire, Hoppy. Good. Steady now. Hey, what's up? Knock, knock. Uh, it worked, Hoppy. Yeah, sit on him. That'll keep him from reaching for that shotgun he dropped when I tripped him. Yeah. All right, Hoppy. I'm sitting on him with my feet nice and convenient to bash his head in. Fine. Now he's going to untie me. Come on, you, and do it fast. Come on. That's it. There. Good. Here, California, I'll get you untied. All right. There. One more knot. That does it. Oh, man, alive. Oh, that sure feels better. Now, what are we going to do with this varmint here? Tie him up and put a gag in his mouth. Sure, I'll get him hogtied right quick. But, Hoppy, uh, you figure the here them bullets can off uh, over in the cabin? No, the cabin's too far away. Oh, that's good. In that case, we won't be mixing up with Tompkins for a while. We're going to deal with Trigger Tompkins as soon as you get this guard tied up. But how are we going to handle Tompkins? He's got four men with him in that cabin, and we ain't got no guns. We got one. The guard shotgun here. Uh, but it's only got two shots. Two shots to take care of five hombres with a couple of six guns apiece. I don't expect to shoot this gun at all. But it's going to help me to, to get a brace of forty fives and trigger Tompkins. Let's go. The way I tie that guard up in there, he ain't going to move. And he ain't going to yell. That much at least I'm sure of. Now, we don't have to worry about him. What we may get into with Tompkins and his men in the cabin is something else. Yeah, and I can't see I like the idea of, uh... Hey, 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 wait a minute, Hoppy. What is it, California? Well, well, here's a cook stove. And in the pan here is a nice, big, ready-cooked beef steak. Oh, he probably the guard cooked it for himself. Never mind it. Let's get going. Never mind it. A, a, a good, delicious beef steak. But we haven't got time. Come on. But, oh, all right, all right. Uh, Hoppy, I'll just take it along with me. Uh, carrying a beef steak ain't going to slow me down much. Here. All right. We'd better make a run for it. We'll keep close to those trees. Make for the end of the cabin there. Let's go. I'm with you. Hold it, California. Look. The shadow of the cabin there. This side of the door. Uh-oh. Oh, he looks mean. And big. <clears throat> what kind of dog is that? It's a mastiff. Let's ease toward him and see what he does. Easy now. Oh. <clears throat> uh, he's mean, all right. And if he decides to let loose uh, uh, and make a real noise, everybody in the cabin will know we're out here. Shh. Not so loud. You're right about it. We can't afford to tangle with Tompkins and these men out here in the open. You think we can sneak back and get around to the cavern from the other side? Well, it's too late for that. The dog's just crouching there, waiting for us to make any move. <laughs> Looks like he's waiting to make a meal of us. That's it. A meal. Uh, what's so exciting about that? The beefsteak. Toss it to him. No, not all at once. A piece at a time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh. Well, uh, right, right here, here, here. Now, let's go in closer. Toss him some more. Oh, here it goes. Ah, it's working, California. I'll walk up and give him the rest. Don't act nervous. Nervous? I ain't 
nervous. I, I, I just hope when he eats this chunk of steak, he won't start in me. Nice dog, nice dog. Hey, Hobby, he's licking my hand. Fine. Now you've made yourself a friend. Let's hope he doesn't raise a ruckus before we get to the cabin. He's following right behind me, tame as a kitten. Well, we'll have to take a chance he stays that way. Come on. Hobby, I still say five men with six shooters again. One man with a shotgun is too many. And there sure ain't no trick that'll get them all to come out like the guard did, especially not one at a time. I don't want them to come out, California. I want them all inside the cabin and all together in the room. Well, there's the winter, and it's lighted up. So somebody's inside. Shh. All right. Now get up to the window and look in. Get ready to run if they spot me. Shh, shut up, dog. Shut up. Go on and look, Hobby. They're all in there with the girl. All of them are in one room. Wonderful. What's so wonderful? There's still five of them, ain't there? Never mind that. Let's move away a little. I want to explain something to you. Yeah, I'd sure like to know what you figure and do. Well, then listen. You see the cabin roof on this end where the chimney comes up? Yeah, sure, I see it. What of it? I want you to climb up there. And the roof? Sure. Uh, and what are you going to be doing while I'm up there? I'm going into the cabin. No, sir, you don't leave me out of this. Where you're going, that's where I'm going to. Let me finish. i got a plan that should work. If we can just time it right. Now, before I go in that door, you get up in that chimney. And once I'm inside, just give me another... <laughs> Seem to me like such a good idea holding a girl here no longer. Just means more trouble than ever. We ought to get rid of her. That's so. Well, if you had the brains of a gopher, you'd know she's our best insurance against trouble. No matter how big a posse they can round up, nobody's gonna come up here looking for a fight as long as they know we're holding Annie Culver. That's how I figured, and that's how it works. Well, that and hop along Cassidy fella come up here. Sure. Look what happened to him. Yeah, but maybe there'll be others. There'll always be others, Trigger Tompkins. I don't care what you do to me, because I know they'll finally get you. Oh, sure. Just let them try. That idea worries me about as much as Hopalong Cassidy does right now. Let's start worrying, Tompkins, because I got a load of buckshot aimed at your middle. Why, is Cassidy? Yeah, he's got a shotgun, too. Don't anybody move and get your hands up. Why? Now, look here, Cassidy. (laughs) You're not scaring anybody. Not with two shots in that gun and five of us here. No. It means I'll get two of you, and the posse is closing in on this place right now. Oh, give me that. The posse is sitting in Joshua Flat waiting for you to get back there. Only you're not going to get back. Think of anything you want, Tompkins, but you'll get the first load of this buckshot, whatever else happens. Is that so? (laughs) It's different now, isn't it, Cassidy? Now I've got the girl in front of me. Want to shoot now? All right, men, get him. Posse, posse, posse. What are they attacking? Everybody hold it. I got you covered with two revolvers now. Drop your guns and stay right where you are. That's right. Now I got 12 shots instead of two. Miss Culver, come over here away from Tompkins. Mr. Cassidy, is the posse really here? (laughs) Well, see for yourself. I believe the posse is coming in now. Are she the trick work, Toffee? Trick? What? Another Another shot, Tompkins. One that did work. Those shots that made you all rush to the windows were only cartridges California dropped down the chimney into your fire. Well, I'll be... Startled you, eh, Tompkins? Left you flat-footed just long enough for me to grab your gun. Nobody can beat Hoppy to the draw, even when he's drawn from somebody else's holsters. Well, (laughs) California, suppose you demonstrate some talents of your own now to these gentlemen. Show them how nice and tight you can tie their hands behind their backs. Sure, sure thing, Hoppy. After that, we'll put them on horses and ride them into Joshua Flat. The posse can round up the rest of the gang. Well, uh, the posse don't need to hurry. Them critters we stampeded must have run halfway to Mexico. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Now, down, boy, down, <laughs> down, down, <laughs> down, <laughs> down, boy, down, 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 Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Say, uh, Hoppy. Yeah? <laughs> I've just been thinking. Suppose when they tied us and locked us in that bunkhouse, they hadn't left our cartridge belts on us. 
Yeah, what about it? Suppose there wasn't no fire going for me to drop them bullets in it. <laughs> and suppose that beefsteak wasn't in the cook stove so we could feed it to the dog. <laughs> what could we have done to get out of that mess? <laughs> Ah, uh, California, there's an old Indian saying that covers that situation. It goes, uh, Pacoito Watunak. Huh? Yeah, uh, what does that mean in America? <laughs> it means don't worry about what might have happened. Be happy with what you've got. Huh? Where? <laughs> <laughs> When Hoppy gets going with a few old Indian tricks, a kidnapped girl is rescued, a bandit gang is routed, and California winds up with a dog after the cleanup of Caribou Mesa. Don't miss another thrilling experience with Hoppy and California when they meet up with six little men who were green. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Cleanup of Caribou Mesa was written by Paul Adams, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based on the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>